Hi there, welcome to No Nonsense Whiskey. My name is Vin Pierre, and on today's episode, we've got a little duo of reviews of Glen Caddams. And I will say at the top of the show, they sent me these two bottles for review. Uh, they did a big suite of these deliveries over to uh, you know the influencer type people, Instagram and whatnot. So I'm quite fortunate to have these, to be fair. But yeah, I've got two today, and I thought it would be a good opportunity to try them both together rather than do individual reviews, a couple of weeks apart or whatever. Get them in together, and we'll do a little quick comparison, and at the end we'll see which one I prefer the most. This is quite easy to band together, to be fair, because this is part of their kind of new range of Reserva, de whatever, de di da, all the different kind of versions of it that they're doing. All different kinds of fortified wines from different regions of the world. And um, yeah, they go well together because they're these two especially are quite similar, but they are you know they're the same price. They're forty seven odd quid. They're both the same um, ABV, forty six percent. They're both non chill filtered, natural coloured, and they're both no age statements. So yeah, fairly easy to band together. Now what I'm going to do is I will re review them kind of semi individually. We're going to start with the older Madeira one over here, and we'll move this one out of the way and then swap them over. So yeah, let's jump straight into the first one. This one here is called the Reserva de Madeira, uh, and it's a ex-bourbon matured whiskey and then finished in Portuguese Madeira wine casks. Um, not much other details I can give you. I can't give you uh, age details. I can't give you how long it was in the bourbon cask. I can't give you how long it was finished for, but um, that's what we've got. So the best thing to do is get straight into the glass and see what we've got. Here, uh, you know, natural colour, so we can talk a little bit about this. We'll do a quick comparison of the two, to be fair. So you can see there's not really a hell of a lot between them. Um, I would arguably say that the uh, Amarone is maybe one shade lighter than the Madeira. But yeah, so it's a lovely colour, lovely, beautiful colour. Legs are uh, not super slow, so I would say fairly thin in this glass. But um, that's not always a bad thing. Let's get into the nose and see what we got. <sighs> now this is this is a very light and understated nose actually. You can really dig in and see what's what, but for me, considering this is a, uh, a Highlands whiskey, I go for what I call a, a kind of almost like a, a typical space sidey nose, which is a bit interesting. Heaps of orchard fruits, those kind of apples, those pears. Vanillas, honeys, all the things you would expect from an ex bourbon cask. The interesting thing is that I'm not really picking up much Madeira from this. I'm not a huge fan of fortified wines, I'll be honest. Uh, I've tried a bit of Madeira, and it's not obviously the the most lively of the fortified wines, but yeah, I would be. If I was on a blind tasting, I'd be tricked into thinking that this probably wasn't a kind of like a wine finished whiskey. But let's try on the palette. Mm hmm. Oh. Now, for me, that's where that all changes. Where the nose was, was really subtle, really light. The palate is way more lively. It's got a big, sweet, kind of, I don't know, I want to say a full frontal. But it's got it's got a big, sweet up front at the start. A big heap of, of spiciness. I'm, I'm going to go, I don't know, it's almost like a cinnamon, nutmeggy vibe. Spiciness, and that disappears fairly quickly as well. And, and then again comes back with the old sweetness. Bags of apples, bags of pears. Lots of fruits, even a little bit of ginger. And we're talking, sometimes when we're talking about sherry finish, we talk about dried fruits, but this is definitely leading towards those kind of like lively, juicy fruits for sure. Mm. Way tastier on the palate than the, the nose would lead me to believe. Yeah, really weird it is. It's just chilling, chilling on the nose. And then just, I mean, absolutely superb on the palate. Mm, I like that. I like that a lot. As you can tell by the uh, the level on these bottles already. Let's have a little swish. Okay. We'll top these over then. So now we've got like this. Actually, in, in terms of labelling, I love this kind of purple colour. 
uh, not so much the orange color but there we are next on the hot list then exactly the same details apart from this is now finished in an Amarone cask uh, now that one there although I've tried some Madeira Amarone I can't say that I've ever tried specifically on its own before so I'm I'm not sure how much influence that's going to have but what I'll do is my normal tasting notes and we'll see how it comes through but yeah again I think we, we checked on the color that it was just ever so slightly lighter I think slightly slightly more viscous the the legs are portraying ever so slightly slower characteristics which is interesting nonetheless I'm not sure what that means to anything but let's get on to the nose Now for me this is a much more lively nose. Very sweet, very nutty. Almost almost a little chocolatey. It's This is like um like, this is a, a weird tasting note, but this is like a baker's pantry. You know, it's, it's got all the all the ingredients that, that someone would just like pull off the shelf and start making some cakes. Weird tasting note. Let's try on the palette. Mm. Now, oh, this, do you know what, it? it's subtle, but it couldn't be more different from the Madeira. It's not sweet, but it's got this kind of like a, a slightly more earthy, more herbal note to it. It's definitely more fragrant. It's definitely more tannic, so we're talking about things like a bit of coffee going on now, a bit more chocolate going on. Yeah, so it's shifted away from the super sweet into the kind of... I don't know, it's really hard to explain, but the words that come into my head are like a little bit more tannic, a little bit more bitter, but I don't want to bring it... I don't want to bring it to you guys as if it's worse by those tasting notes, so... Think of the difference between a uh, like a milk chocolate and a dark chocolate. Like when I'm talking about bitterness, that's what I'm talking about. So this is definitely more on the kind of dark chocolatey side of things. It's more like a, it's more like a uh, like uh, I think I said last time a black forest gato, but I can never remember if it's dark forest gato or black forest gato. Um, it's this is where this is sitting. So it's kind of like dark forest fruits, dark forest, black forest. I don't know. It's one of those two. Hmm. Now, here's the interesting thing. Right now, today, the Amarone is is, is my favourite of the two. Um, and not even by a small margin, by quite, quite a good wedge. However, um, that's just, that's my mood today. That's what I've eaten today. That's where I am this evening. That could easily flip on its head. You know, I, I don't have a particularly sweet tooth, but I find myself more often than not, apart from today apparently, going towards the sweeter whiskies, which is really odd. So I would wager tomorrow the Madeira would be my favourite and the day after it would go back the other way. Um, so yeah, I'm very fortunate to have both of these because then I can indulge that difference in myself. The critical question for you is if you're only buying one bottle, which bottle do you buy? Personally, I would say between these two, it doesn't really matter because they're both fantastic. There are a whole suite of others in the range. So if there were others that you were looking at and you would think, actually, I prefer that kind of wine over the other kinds of wines, then that might be one to look at versus the other. But as always, Glen Caddam producing excellent whiskey for a reasonable price. You know, these are 47 quid, just a shy of 50 quid, which is expensive by the standards of the times when I started my channel, but these days, not so much. Uh, and I think these, especially, all right, you're foregoing your age statement, but if you're adding in things like non-chill filtered, natural colored, you know, those sorts of things, you can't really, you, you can't really sniff at those things, you know, so I think it's well within the normal wheelhouse of Glen Caddam, that's for sure. Um, yeah, I think if you're a fan of Glen Caddam, you're definitely gonna find some enjoyment in these, and I think if you were looking to onboard onto the brand, then basically any of these finishes would do you a favor if it's a, a finish that you particularly enjoy above any others. So yeah, if you like Madeira, check that one out. If you like the Amarone, check that one out. If you're not sure, buy either, doesn't really matter. Yeah, today though, the Amarone wins out for me. So that's the one I'm gonna finish up with today. Cheers.